Welcome back to CBC News Sunday Night. In mythology, Shangri-La is utopia, paradise on earth. And now, it's also the name of a new diet. According to government statistics, one quarter of Canadians are obese. We're about to meet a researcher who has a battle plan and a book to go with it. His theory? We are all cavemen and cave women. We evolved to put on weight in times of plenty to get us through times of hunger. Sunday, Sarah Kapoor went to meet the man behind the Shangri-La diet. You won't go hungry. You won't be deprived of anything. You'll lose interest in food in a new way. And that loss of interest in food will cause you to walk away from foods you usually have trouble avoiding. And so you'll be calm again. Welcome to Shangri-La, a place where you eat what you want and you're never hungry. You don't have to exercise more and the tools of weight loss include eating more sugar and fat. It seems so good. Could it be true? Seth Roberts is a professor from Berkeley who's come up with a fascinating new theory for weight loss. His book, The Shangri-La Diet, is in stores as of this week. In order to get how it works, you have to understand the difference between your weight and your set point. Your, your, your weight is sort of following behind your set point. If your set point goes here, your weight will follow. You know, you set your thermostat to 80 degrees or 70 degrees or whatever, and that's the temperature that the whole system is aiming towards. And your set point is your, the weight your body's aiming you toward, by you know, making you hungrier or less hungry, more hungry or less hungry. When your weight is less than your set point, you feel hungry. When it's about the same, you feel comfortable. And when your weight is over your set point, you feel full. According to Robert's theory, this hunger thermostat was designed to help you survive in the Stone Age. In a time of abundance, your set point would go up and you'd be more hungry. You'd eat more and store that as fat, a good way to get through times when food was scarce. Now imagine your inner caveman in today's world with no end of food in sight. I want some Kung Pao chicken. Statistics Canada data confirms that obesity rates in our country have nearly doubled among adults and nearly tripled among children over the past 25 years. According to Roberts, there's something else that's making our current food environment supercharged for fatness. Well, I have a theory. Now, if we accept the theory, it's easy to explain, but you have to accept the theory. If you don't accept the theory, then you'll be still be puzzled. The theory is that our set point is determined by the flavors of what we eat, as strange as that may seem. Robert says that when you eat something, the flavor is remembered by your brain. Your stomach sends a signal that also registers calories. The brain connects the flavors with the calories. The stronger that connection is, the more your set point goes up. The first time you have a Coke, if you could possibly remember that, it tastes kind of weird. After you've had it many times, it tastes really good. The reason for that, the Coke hasn't changed. The Coke is identical. It's exactly the same amount of sugar, exactly the same chemicals in the Coke, the first time and the 20th time. But the 20th time, it tastes so much better, and that's because your brain has changed. You've learned the association between the flavor of the Coke and the calories in the Coke. So flavor-calorie associ flavor associations make food taste good. As you eat the food more and more, it tastes better and better. It becomes more fattening. Yes, he is saying that your hundredth Coke could make you fatter than your first. Now wait till you hear about chocolate. A one pound box of chocolate could really raise your set point 10 pounds. It, it does work that way. And um, so you, you eat the chocolate and a little piece of chocolate might raise your set point a lot, a lot more than however much that piece of chocolate weighs. And basically the piece of chocolate is telling your brain that there's a lot of food out there. Oh my God, you know, we've reached, you know, we reached a great time in, in life, in, or in the year, and now is the time to stock up. So you don't just eat that piece of chocolate, you get hungry, and you start to eat all sorts of things. It's so good. If the theory is true, this is a terrible truth for many. Holy crap! According to Roberts, it's the combination of a time of plenty, plus a time where people eat more and more identical processed foods that's sending set points and weight through the roof. And Seth Roberts says he's found a way to trick your set point. The solution is, is that you can drink unflavored sugar water between meals or unflavored flavorless oils between meals. 
oils with little or no flavor, like canola oil or extra, extra light olive oil. According to the Shangri-La diet, this gives you calories without flavor, and your brain doesn't get the signal to raise your set point. The whole food part of your brain stops shuts down, it stops disturbing you, it stops making you think about food, it stops making you you know, wonder what am I going to have for dinner, it stops making you react very strongly when you see junk food or your favorite food. You just, those things stop, have, stop being attractive to you. You lose interest in food and ultimately eat less. Robert says drinking the sugar water and flavorless oil will work forever because there's no flavor to become familiar with. I'd done other things, other conventional things, or things I discovered to lower my weight. And I had to, I could work pretty hard and I could lower my weight, but I might have to work quite hard to lower my weight five pounds. This way it was easy to lower my weight 30 pounds. What makes the diet unusual is that Roberts didn't discover his theory or test it through scientific studies. He discovered it by experimenting on himself. Golly, there you are. You'd really like to see some proof. Dr. David Jenkins is one of the most renowned nutritionists in North America. He took a look at Seth Roberts' theory and has an open mind about it. And some part of him thinks it just sounds too easy to work. I have absolutely no qualms about doing this particular experiment. As you say, it is both cheap and safe. It's environmentally friendly. What more could you want in terms of a weight loss diet? So hence the term Shangri-La, I would agree. Um, I hope it works out for him. Uh, we can't tell whether it will at present. We don't have the numbers, and we don't really have a clear logic for the scientific underpinning. You can simply try it, and if it works, you'll continue. And if it doesn't work, you can stop. And when people tried it, they so, it so clearly worked, they so clearly lost weight, there was no need for a big study to demonstrate the obvious. Looking at the immense problem we've got with body weight control, uh, the fact that it's one of our preeminent health problems of today, the solution that he proposes is so nice that it truly is too good to be true. And I can't see it working without a lot more grinding of teeth and, and, and sweat and blood and tears and all the things that people have to do to show self-restraint. It will, it will simply be too effective to ignore, and that when people ask themselves why is it working again and again, they'll, they'll come to decide that, number one, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to understand this because it seems like it might be working, and when it works again and again, they're going to say, well, it's got to be right, because how could it be wrong and be so useful? Seth Roberts says he doesn't worry about his weight anymore. Anytime he wants to eat chocolate, he just takes a little more oil. It is a new idea with both early critics and early praise, and a desperate market looking for an easier route to Shangri-La. I just, before we go on here, I should say that when that uh, fella in the, in the piece there was sipping the oil on a spoon, <laughs> it didn't look too tasty. I don't know how long you could just sip oil from a spoon. But now we should mention, of course, that the Shangri-La diet is just the latest in a long, long line of big name diets competing for lots of money out there. So you should always talk to your doctor before starting any plan or you start sipping oil. Now, plus the price of oil.